Daisy here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Rosa Studio watercolors. I've been curious about these for a couple of years, ever since I tried the Rosa Gallery watercolors. The Rosa Gallery watercolors are a professional watercolor paint made in the Ukraine, and they are such great quality for the price you pay. They're a very low-cost watercolor. I wouldn't say they're the best in the world, but for the price, they are really amazing. Um, so when I saw their student grade advertised, I was really intrigued, but for the longest time, this set was $20, and their um, professional set of 24 colors in a cardboard box was like $26. So I'm like, well, I, you know, I just, I guess I didn't want to buy these for just a couple bucks less than the professional ones, because the professional ones are, you know, so good, and just a couple bucks more. But these went on overstock for ten dollars uh, about a week ago, a week and a half ago or so, and so I decided I would order them. Um, they had mixed reviews. I didn't. Uh, I try not to look at too many reviews before I do a review, but I did look at some to decide whether or not I want to buy it. But my curiosity won in the end, and I decided that I wanted to get them. So these are made in Ukraine. Um, they have all the colors with their pigment information on the back, and this also came with a sticker that was about this big with the information on it. And what I did was I, I cut the sticker up and I swatched it out on a big piece of watercolor paper so I could really see what these colors looked like and get a feel for them. First time I used them, I just did a quick little swatch just so I could see what the colors actually looked like because as you can see, like most watercolors, they look pretty dark in the box and it's hard to tell what they are. But that's a good sign when your watercolors look dark and you can't really tell what the color is because that indicates that they're more likely to be transparent and have less like chalky fillers and stuff in them. So let's take a look at the colors. I'll show you how they mix the warm primaries and cold primaries. Then I, I want to compare them to the professional range. So um, I'm just going to go through the the, uh, the colors real quick. We've got Lemon Yellow, PY3, which is a Hansi Yellow Light. We've got this one called Yellow Light, which is PY1, which is not a light fast yellow to my um, remembering. And it's also a little bit chalky. You can see the, the haze over the, um, the line here. We've got Yellow Medium, which is a mixture of PY74 and PY83, and I think that should be okay. We've got Orange, which is PO13. We see that a lot in, in um, like your non-toxic craft grade paints. I think it might actually even be a cosmetic or food colorant, but it's not a very light fast one. We've got Red Light, which is a combination of PR2 and PR4. That's not a light fast red, so you'd wanna be careful, but it is a pretty warm red. And if you're using it in a sketchbook or, you know, um, I would say give it to your kids to learn, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm always kind of like, uh, you got to know your kid, whether your kid is good about, you know, studio safety and whatnot. Um, you know, you got to know your kids. If your kids are like sticking their paintbrush in their drink and then drinking the drink, you know, I mean, obviously give them the non-toxic Crayola and stuff, but if your kids are more responsible about studio safety and you're watching them and stuff, you know, they could have something like this. Uh, Red Deep PR170, I don't remember that being a, a problematic color. Um, matter, matter often is one that will fade on you. This is a mix of PR144 and PR63 colon one, and I'm not that familiar with those two pigments. I don't think you often see those in um, artist watercolors. Um, and then we have Carmine PR57 colon one. I'm not sure if that is true Carmine, which is made from like beetle shells, and if so, that would not be a vegetarian color, but I'm not I'm not sure about that. Um, we have Violet Light, which is PB29, which is ultramarine, plus uh, PR122, which I believe is a quinacridone red uh, color, and, or magenta, um, and that should be all right. Uh, then we've got this one. Uh, this looks like a, it looks like a dioxazine violet, but it says it's PV3, and that is a fugitive purple. Then we've got PG7, which is a good light fast color in PY74. That should be all right. We've got PG8. Um, I've never had a problem with this green fading, but I have heard that it's not the most light fast green. Uh, you know, I haven't really had a problem with it. Yarka White Knights uses this. Um, Rosa uses this. You see it in kind of um, more Eastern watercolors, it seems like. Then we've got PG7. That's a tried and true phthalo green blue shade. We've got this beautiful turquoise, which is a combination of phthalo blue and phthalo green. Then we've got uh, blue light, which is your typical phthalo blue. We've got a fairly weak, unfortunately, ultramarine blue. Ultramarine is one of my favorite colors to use. I use it all the time. I use it up faster than anything. And it's got some pretty granulation, but I will say it's kind of, uh, it's kind of weak. It's kind of weak in this set. 
We've got a very pretty blue here. It says PB15 uh, colon one, which would be a phthalo blue red shade, I believe. And it almost looks kind of like a um, uh, Prussian blue, but it would actually be a little more light fast because it is a phthalo blue. And I'm going by my knowledge of pigments. There are also light fast ratings on here. Um, so, I mean, that's handy too. I'm not sure if they're on a one to three scale. That's all the stuff is one to three. Let me look at the box. Maybe it says, or maybe it's on a one to five scale and five is the best and I don't have any of those, but looking at burnt sienna being a three and lamp black being a three, three must be their, their um, biggest one. But then again, they gave yellow light. If that's the case, they gave yellow light a really good um, light fast rating. And I've always heard PY1 is not great. Maybe I'm thinking PR red, PR, uh, PR1. Huh. Anyway, we have yellow ochre, PY42. That's, now I'm surprised that's not a three star because that's a very light fast pigment. We've got English red, which is PR101. And that's got a beautiful granulation to it, which you often don't find in the PR101. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but that has a really pretty granulation. Could have something to do with the fillers that are in it, but uh, it's, it's a pretty effect. We've got a raw sienna, which is a combination of PY42 and PBR6. We have burnt sienna, which is, and this is a very weak, milky burnt sienna, I have to say. It's uh, a mixture of PR101, PBR6, and PY42. So it's kind of like a light valued, milky, um, slightly granulating burnt sienna. We have raw umber, which is a kind of like greenish brown color, a, mix, a mixture of PBR6, PBK7, and PY42. No light fast problems there. We've got a sepia that's actually in mass tone, very opaque it seems. Um, and that is PR101, PY42, and PBK7. And then we've got just a, we've got PBK7 plus PB151, which is that uh, phthalo blue red shade, you know, plus the uh, the black. And yeah, that's, a, that's our colors. So I did a glaze of each of these colors. Um, I was happy to see that there wasn't like, and I used it pretty thick and I was expecting there to be a lot of really shiny spots and there wasn't. So that's nice. Um, some of the colors had a little bit of, of haze on the white, on the black line, but not as bad as I expected it would, honestly, with the student grade paint here. Um, every color lifted up really well, which is a, and this is just cheap cellulose paper. Every color lifted up really great with scrubbing, um, and it didn't leave much staining behind. So that's an indication of two things. One is a good thing that they're probably not bulking the colors up and boosting them with dyes. But the bad thing is that they probably have a lot of fillers in there that are kind of helping it from seep, helping the pigment from seeping into the paper. And it also impedes the flow of the paint. So, um, cheap and cheerful is what we got going on here. And let's, uh, let's take a look at mixing. So here I did a mix with the with the cool primaries and warm primaries. So for my cool primaries, I use lemon yellow, carmine, and blue light, which is a phthalo, a typical phthalo blue. And we've got a beautiful bright green, we got a nice orange, and we got a gorgeous purple. And then for our warm primaries, I used ultramarine blue, I you which is right there. I used red deep. And I used yellow medium and we got a nice olive green. We've got a eggplant purple and we got a beautiful rich orange. So the colors had no problems mixing whatsoever. And then I did a couple little paintings. So I'm gonna share those with you and nothing, I didn't spend a heck of a lot of time on any of these, but uh, this was today's Inktober thing that, uh, I mean, you'll be seeing this after Inktober's all done, but I just was kind of like mixing up a bunch of colors to try to get murky mud. And actually the colors mixed really well. Um, I was also kind of working like lifting out for the highlights and then going back in with darks. Everything worked really well for that. I did some just like uh, loose flowers and let the colors bleed. I did a couple skies um, and then I was just kind of wet and wet seeing what the colors would do and the colors do not want to move very much, which may be good if you don't like your colors to move, but I like my colors to move. So I found that to be a little bit of a pain. And here I was mixing just some deep neutrals to do a different Inktober prompt. And you know, the, the paint did what I wanted it to do. Um, kind of nice for sketchbooking if you don't want your paint to flow too much. But my preference in painting is to have a more flowy paint personally. But you know, that's personal preference. The colors are certainly vibrant and transparent. But the one thing that I really disliked about this paint is that it's very thick. Like it's very, it almost feels like um, if you've ever, use children's watercolors, the washable watercolors. 
um, they, they have this kind of syrupy consistency to them. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. And probably one of the biggest offenders would be the ultramarine blue. Now these colors, um, you don't need to pre-wet them. In fact, I didn't pre-wet them, but I'm just going to add some water here. And you can see like this, this definitely has some fillers in it. Look how much lighter it got when I put that water in there. It almost looks kind of milky. Can you just see it's just, it just quickly goes into this kind of like milky, um, kind of milky, thick texture. Now I can add some water to that and pull it out. This reminds me of like cobalt blue hue when, when uh, student grade colors do the cobalt blue hue. You know, it's with a lot of water it will move, but it's definitely got this kind of thick pastiness, almost like um, it's got a starch or corn syrupy type binder added to it. I don't know if that probably doesn't, I mean, it looks fine. It looks pretty, but it just, you could just feel this kind of thickness and gloopiness to it. Now let's compare it to the artist grade ultramarine blue. Now I'm noticing dents in these paints on some of the colors already, which is something I notice in the Rosa colors, especially ultramarine blue, because I use it the most. Just looking at the pan color though difference, um, can you see the difference between the Rosa ultramarine blue there? Ah, let me see if I can hold it up. The Rosa ultramarine blue there and the the uh, Rosa, that's a student grade, and this is the professional ultramarine blue. See how much darker that is? It's the same pigment. There's just a lot of filler or something in there. And I'm thinking it's probably some sort of starch. But the, um, let me just get that another, get another brush load there. But you can see how much richer that color, well, hopefully you can see how much richer that color is. And let's just get some water in there and you can see it flow a little bit better, I think. See how it just kind of bushes a little bit? We can also do, um, I can do a couple little patches of just water and we can drop in some of the colors. So this one here, I'll do the student or the studio. Let me just put an S next to that one so we'll know. And I'll put a P, a P or a G for gallery, I don't know. What do we want to do? That one's the professional one, that's the, stu the student one. So I'll just put some, some of that ultramarine there and then I'll do the professional one up there. You can see it just kind of wants to move a little bit, a little bit more, whoosh out a little bit more. Now let's do like a uh, carmine color. So taking it for the pro range. I haven't pre-activated pre anything here. That one doesn't move all that much, but it's very vibrant. And this would be the equivalent here. It probably don't look that much different on camera. Um, let's see, what's another color I have in both? I've got the PG7, so this would be in the Pro. And this would be in the Studio. So the Studio one just wants to be, it just wants to sit a little bit more. But it's even then, it's not all that, not all that different. Let's drop in some lemon. And then let's drop in some lemon from the studio. And now let's just kind of like mix some colors around and see how vibrant they stay. Definitely have to use more of the studio versus the the um, the gallery. And I mean, I just don't, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's just a certain thickness to this that is not in the, that's not in the other paints. So let's do this yellow ochre. And can you see how thick that is? Versus the professional. The professional actually looks weaker, and I just think because it doesn't have so much, like, thickness to it. Mix them together and see how they flow. But anyway, I'd say for 10 bucks, they're worth it. Um, I would say they're pretty well on par to like the, the Paul Rubens full pan student set and the Sonnet student set. But I think the Sonnet and the Paul Rubens are a little bit more whooshy and thinner. In fact, I'm gonna grab those just so we can do another really quick comparison. Um, the Rosa Gallery definitely has more pigment. And if you're gonna pay full price for these, $20 is what they were on Amazon when they weren't on sale. The professional one in a, in a 
cardboard box set of 24 is like 26 and like the set of 12 is 15 so go with a professional range even if you have to do a smaller set would be my opinion but I don't think these are bad I, I really don't think they're bad especially for 10 bucks and if you want a paint work that's not going to move on you uh which I think might be nice for sketchbookers or if you like to work on paper that doesn't have a lot of sizing I think these would actually be quite a nice paint but I'm going to go grab those other two paints we're going to come back we'll do a little com comparison between those two sets because those other two sets sell for about 20 25 dollars a little regular price a little more comparable to these and then um we'll go from there I will say out of the three sets the Paul Rubens has the nicest tin which actually has a mixing area and um I mean you can get the the sonnet ones in which is the White Knights or St. Petersburg ones in a um you can get them in a tin but then that brings the price up this is about $25 in the tin and I do like that you can also look I think the pans are a little bit smaller in the um Yep, the pans are, are smaller. Can you see that? The pan size is smaller for the Rosa. So that's the Paul Rubens. And then let's look at the White Knights. Or, uh, it's it's called Sonnet. It's by the same company that makes Yarka and White Knights. They're about the same size, I would say. They're very good. Let's put it over near the yellow one so you can see. I think those are about the same size. But this is also in a cardboard box, and that's kind of a, a bummer. You need to have a plate or something that you can mix on when you have those. So I'm going to set these so that I have these in the same order as how I have them on my paper. And we're just going to do a quick little comparison. Let's see. So let's try a purple. Let's do, I think they all have that, uh, they all have a purple similar to that. That's very pretty. Um... Let's see, where's our purple, like similar to that, would probably be this guy. That just feels a little thinner, like it's vibrant, You, I feel like you've got the pigment without having all the thickness. You get the same amount of color without all of that thickness, I guess is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say there. And the sun, where's my sun, I have a swatch for my sonnet, here it is. I need to turn it around so it matches. So this one right here would be the similar, similar one in the sonnet, which I think it almost feels a little bit more pigmented compared to the other two. Let's do, um, well, might as well do ultramarine because that's a color we all depend on. I'll just bring it right up to that and let them blend together. Then on the sonnet, we will take, oh gosh, I think it's this one here. I didn't get this I haven't touched that paint in years so that's a beautiful ultramarine blue you can see how this is kind of sitting where it where I put it in this it's kind of blending a little bit more and then the Paul Rubens I think that the sonnets ultramarine blue looks the most ultramarine compared to um, compared to others although the Paul Rubens and the Rosa almost look a little more granular Let's do a lemon yellow. This is the sonnet. Beautiful. Look how easily the sonnets blend. I don't know if, if you'll be able to find those right now. Probably not until the, um, the fighting in Ukraine and Russia. That war is over. I don't think we'll, you'll be able to get those paints readily but they're very similar and I just wanted to have that to compare to not that I'm endorsing anything I'm just uh agnostically comparing paint Paul Rubin student is very pigmented there I would say I would probably say between the three the Paul Rubin student has the most pigment the sonnet is the smoothest and the rosa is vibrant but it has a, 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 a thick a thick feel to it and I would say out of the three the rosa is my least favorite in the studio range um, but I do like their professional ones and I think they all have that green. Let's do that um, Let's do that that PG8 green And this one is right here. It's a pretty green They look about identical And let's see where's I think it's 
Yeah, I almost think that the Rosa looks a little bit dingier compared to the other two as well. And I think that's just due to whatever they have in there. It's not chalky, but it's definitely thick. Like there's some sort of like a starchy additive or maybe I would say it just reminds me of like, have you ever made like kids watercolors? I remember those really popular um, oh, DIYs a few years ago where people were making watercolors out of food coloring and cornstarch and they were putting them in, in a like a ice cube trays for like their kids to use. That's what this feels like. It feels like starchy, like it's got starch in it. Um, now this is kind of dried. You can see that the, it's not fully dried, but you can just see this is a more lovely texture in the pro range of Rosa versus the studio range. And when the studio range is full price at 20 bucks and the pro range is like 26 for, for the set of 24, I mean, definitely just go with it. Save up a couple more bucks and go with the pro range. But um, I definitely think that this was worth the 10 bucks I paid. I'll probably, um, I don't know, I might, I might keep it just for future reviews to compare it to, but in general, something like this, I probably would pass on to, uh, to a kid that needs some watercolors that is just kind of getting in the, the introductory stage, just wants to splash the paint around, doesn't really have, you know, needs to get some brush miles under their belt. Um, but I'm not really going to recommend this set when there are so many better similarly priced alternatives. Like I said, I paid 10 bucks for it for 10 bucks all day long. It's wonderful. But if you're going to pay a regular price, I would say go ahead and get the Paul Rubens because you get a tin with all this mixing area. You get this nice, all this space. It's 25 bucks regular price every day of the week. And the biggest bummer with these two sets is not having a mixing area with it. Like when I was working in my sketchbook, it worked great in my sketchbook, but I had to scrounge around to find something to mix on. Now there are these clear, these like um, overlays that come uh, that come with them that you could mix on, but it's just, I don't know, it's kind of like, kind of messy and not um, and not the best. Also, with Paul Rubens, you get more paint because the pans are larger. So if I'll, I'll pull out a couple pans just to just to compare here. This is more of like a standard full pan, like what you would get from, say, um, Lindsay Newton. And see, the Rosa one is, and the Rosa Professional ones are also a little bit smaller, and so are the White Knights. But um, yeah, I'm definitely going to give the, give the, I give my recommendation to the Paul Rubens if you want a student grade full pan set. I think these are better than Cotman, which also offers a student grade full pan full pan set. Um, I think a light fastness is better on the Cotman set, uh, but it's a lot more expensive. The 24 set I think runs around 60 bucks on Amazon, and this one's 25. And I feel like it's much more vibrant and acts more like a professional set, uh, but it's not as light fast. Cotman is more light fast. It's made from Windsor Newton, using the same pigments as their professional range, just in a lower. A lower density, but then you get that sliminess with the Cotman paints, kind of like we were getting with the Rosa Rosa Studio. So, yeah, this would be my pick out of this out of this range of of paints for the the quality and the fact that you get a tin. But anyway, I wanted to get that review done because I know these Rosa sets have been on an amazing sale lately. Absolutely, get their Rosa Gallery line, which is the professional line. And I would say, you know, unless you're unless you're just getting this to burn through it in a sketchbook, you just want vibrant color and you don't care about how much it flows or blends or anything like that. You just want vibrant color. Maybe you're a card maker or a scrapbooker. You're not. You're, you just want to put the color down. You're not going to be spending a lot of times blending or working wet into wet things like that. Um, other than that, I would say just just spend a couple more bucks and go for the pro range. The pro colors have been on amazing sales too. I actually got the set of 24 in a plastic tin for $20 during that sale. So there, there's all kinds of deals. There's all kinds of deals to look at, but I would definitely just go for the go, go for the pro, go for the pro. It's not that much more expensive and you're going to be much happier with the results. But that said, 10 bucks, it's not bad. The paint, the paints are pretty. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just kind of stodgy and slow, um, but they're not chalky and they're vibrant. It just depends on what you want, I guess. 10 bucks, you know, I was, I'm, I'm satisfied with $10, but I mean, I'll probably just pull them out when I need to compare them against other paints. Like if I'm wondering who's making this or who, who's making that, but I probably won't use them again. I'll probably, you know, probably just go into the go into the archives at this point. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. And if you bought these for ten bucks, what do you think of them? Are you happy with them? Like for ten, like I said, ten bucks, I think they're great. I mean, heck, you could dig the pans out, dig the paint out, and you reuse the pans for ten bucks. But um, but yeah, I, I would probably say skip it. That would be my my final thoughts on this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these reviews, please give me a thumbs up. I mean, look, they mix beautifully. They mix beautifully. Card makers, scrapbookers, sketchbookers, any place you don't want to work really wet washes, they're going to be fine. I'm waffling, aren't I? I 
for 10 bucks. They're great. Would I spend 20? No, you can do better for 20 bucks. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.